The Proportions of Man The paintings of Leonardo da Vinci has been appreciated and raved about for a very long time. One of his lesser known but highly acclaimed work is the Vitruvian Man based on the work of the architect Vitruvius. Vitruvius had shown a man in two superimposed positions with his arms and legs apart and inscribed in a circle and square. The drawings are often called the canon of proportions. The drawing is in pen and ink and kept at an art gallery in Venice and opened to the public only occasionally. The drawing is based on the correlations of the ideal human body in relation to geometry. Vitruvius described the human body as being the ideal body to determine correct proportions in architecture. Vitruvius determined that the human body should be eight heads high. According to Neoplatonism, in the great chain of being man is at the center of the chain with God being at the top and all other animals in the lower rung. It is up to man to climb up or down. In other words, he chooses his path of being closer to God or to the animal. This fact is used to answer of how to square a circle and how to use the area of circle and create a square. Metaphorically, using Roman architect Vitruvius, Leonardo da Vinci claimed that the navel is center of the human body, such that when a center is drawn around, it encompasses both stretched hands and legs. Also, a square can be drawn taking crotch at the center as the height of a standstill body is equal to total arm span length. Geometry, according to him, is a beautiful language and if the human being followed it perfectly, he can carve a beautiful line for himself. According to Vinci, Vitruvio architect puts in his work on architecture that the measurements of man are in nature distributed in this manner, that is, a palm is four fingers, a foot is four palms, a cubit is six palms, four cubits make a man, a pace is four cubits, a man is twenty-four palms. If you open your legs enough that your head is lowered by one by fourteenth of your height and raise your hands enough that your extended fingers touch the line of the top of your head, Know that the center of the extended limbs will be the navel and the space between the legs will be an equilateral triangle. These proportions are also given by him. The length of the outspread arms is equal to the height of a man. From the hairline to the bottom of the chin is one by tenth of the height of a man. From below the chin to the top of the head is one by eight of the height of a man. From above the chest to the top of the head is one by six of the height of a man. From above the chest to the hairline is one by seven of the height of a man. The maximum width of the shoulders is one by four of the height of a man. From the breasts to the top of the head is one by four of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the tip of the hand is one by four of the height of a man. The distance from the elbow to the armpit is one by eight of the height of a man. The length of a hand is one by ten of the height of a man. The root of the penis is at half the height of a man. The foot is one by seven of the height of a man. From below the foot to below the knee, is one by four of height of a man. From below the knee to the root of the penis is one by four of the height of a man. The distances from below the chin to the nose and the eyebrows and the hairline are equal to the ears and to one by three of the face. If nature has composed the human body so that 
in its proportions, the separate individual elements answer to the total form. Then the ancients seem to have had reason to decide that bringing their creations to full completion, likewise, required a correspondence between the measure of individual elements and the appearance of the work as a whole. The quality of a man, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. We will receive not what we idly wish for, but what we justly earn. Our regards will always be in exact proportion to our service. The above account is proof to the extent to which our forefathers had an understanding of geometry. Oh. <sighs>